Why do you shop at Walmart? What do you buy here? Because uh, the groceries are a little cheaper. A little cheaper? Uh, where Am do I you... going to be on TV? No. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> do you live close to here? Is that like a factor? No, we live in Wakefield. Okay, and do you ever go to Target? No, not much. Okay. Basically because I live around the corner yeah. and the prices are fairly reasonable. Okay. Because it's cheaper. Do you live around here? I do. And you shop at Walmart rather than like stop and shop and stuff like that, like the prices? Yeah, I never go to stop and shop, period. Prices are better. Prices are better? Yeah. I just saved about 40 bucks. Uh, prices? Prices? Prices, do you live around here? No. What do you buy at Walmart? Uh, just general groceries. Uh, it's kind of odds and ends. Nothing specific, like not grocery shopping. We decided to head into Walmart to see if we could get a few of our questions answered. Immediately after walking into Walmart, we seemed to be bombarded by signs claiming an everyday low price. These signs were everywhere. I'm also learning the store. Um, so they're educating you a lot. Do you if, shop? I'm, if I'm willing to learn. Yeah. Do you uh, shop here? Religiously. Really? What for? Everything? Electronics too? Everything. Yeah. I love Walmart. Everything about Walmart. Do you live over here? I do. I live in Quasit. Okay. So why would you say Walmart is the best place to shop? Prices, customer service, cleanliness, quality. Yet, there seemed to be a lack of employees around to help the customers. Attention associates! Associate from Electronics with the keys to sporting goods, please. Associate from Electronics with the keys to sporting goods for customer assistance. You know, when you're on a budget, you know, you, get, you can get better deals here than you can, say, Dave's or, you know, Stop and Shop. Granted, they have the 10 for 10, you know, we can get more of a deal here. Although the larger stores have a greater buying power, which equates to lower prices for the consumer, we decided to head over to a small grocery store to see what they have to bring to the table. And we give a student discount and a senior discount. And the student discount's actually college usually. Uh, we haven't really discussed non-college. Like these, for example, these are probably a pretty good price point, $2.99. You know, that's pretty inexpensive. Um, see what they usually are. So probably like They're regularly $4.59. Uh, so, yeah. very good. When they're out, when things are on sale. Yeah. Those. Um, almond butter can be extremely expensive. So, we buy enough that we can pass on the discount that we get. So, normally it's, normally it's $18.69. We're able to mark it down on a regular low price of $15.69. Just, I mean, it still seems like a lot, and it is. This one's organic, that's why it's more expensive. Non-organic is a little bit less, 14, but any way that we can, because we know that there are so many options for people to shop, and obviously larger stores have bigger buying power. Yeah. <laughs> so, so those are just some examples that come to mind of some of our better ways to get a value here. What about Target? I don't know. I get confused with Target because the, there's their floor plan. I tend to get lost. Like an injustice done to you by Walmart, or everything's been? It's um, actually union free. I've had a union job before. I did not like the union job. You, it's what they have is an open door policy. So if there's any kind of issue, um, any kind of suggestion to make the store better, um, even even with customers asking questions and maybe getting a product that they might not have, we are free to express ourselves, to suggest um, better selling, um, different. Um, basically, you just, 
you know, the employees have a say rather than the union. We liked the idea of the open door policy. So we headed back to the car to try and get in contact with the heads of corporate Walmart. It wasn't as easy as the lady with the necklaces had made it seem. All agents are busy. Please hold the line and the next available agent will assist you with your call. The estimated hold time is currently 13 minutes 45 seconds. After a while of waiting, we were disconnected. Have you ever like, talked to the manager or anything personally? I, I, I have conversations with the management when we have had um, certain problems, um, customers um, wanting maybe benches throughout the store or a specific item. And management's always always there for you, whether they can help you or whether they can't help you, they're, they'll try their best. Yeah, we were just doing a, we were doing a video. Alright, can't have you do anything like that here. No? No. Just like, can you take pictures for like some prices or anything? No, nothing. Can we uh, talk to you? Can we do like an interview or something like that? Maybe. No. Walmart's entry into a new market has a strongly negative effect on existing retailers. Supermarkets and discount variety stores are the most adversely affected, suffering sales declines of 10% to 40% after Walmart opens. We decided to pursue the automotive aspect of choice economics. You feel like you compete with like the huge dealerships in Rhode Island or? No. No, I think that they're uh, they attract a different clientele overall and uh, some people don't want to deal with an independent news lot, they want something with a high name, you know, with a, uh, with a brand name. Do you yourself buy used or new? I've always purchased used, uh, with the exception in uh, the 2000s when uh, interest rates were zero. Uh, I did purchase a new car one time. Did you uh, find a big difference with the new and used car? Or? Um, the payment, I mean, because it was 0% financing, you really don't negotiate the price as well, so the payments are very high. You know, six hundred dollars a month, uh, six hundred to six hundred thirty dollars a month, compared to on a used vehicle is anywhere between three and three fifty on average. We concluded that although we may have the choice to buy a new or used car, the decision has already been made up for the majority of us. Another major decision every person has to make in their life is where they're going to live. So what happens is when you have the best house in, you want to say the best neighborhood? Uh, in a good neighborhood. In a good neighborhood. Um, sometimes you can put too much money into your property and you won't be able to get it out. Because, for example, that neighborhood might be a good neighborhood, but it can only justify so much money. And so a lot of people, will, they'll put too many things into their property and they'll put all the you know features in and they'll never get their money back. But that's the way that they wanted to live. You know what I mean? They like those cosmetic, you know, details they put into the property. 
but it doesn't mean that you're always going to get that money back. You know what I mean? That that neighborhood has a ceiling of how high you know the price can go. Even though it's the best property in a good neighborhood, you'll still get the best price in that neighborhood more than likely. But you won't. Sometimes you can lose out. You know, with that. So if you had that same house that you put all the money into and you moved it to a better neighborhood, you so get the best house in the best neighborhood with you know there's. Unlimited if you're on the water. I mean, it depends upon how much acreage you have or anything else. That that price can be somewhat unlimited, right? But in this neighborhood here, there's probably some properties that that you know more than likely, you know, I would say a good neighborhood, and maybe they put maybe too much. Will they ever get their money back? Uh, do you think everyone has the opportunity to send their kid to a private school? Uh, everyone probably possibly could. There's a lot of, you know, financial aid, there's a lot of assistance, there's a lot of loans and, you know, probably grants and stuff like that that probably they could take advantage of. Do you think it's a choice to send them to a public school rather than a private school? It's a choice, yeah, that that person makes and, you know, financially they might not know their options and, and have the ability to kind of, maybe they just don't know the their options, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And so that's what happens to a lot of people too. It's not really the choices, they don't even know what the choices are or, or what the potential choices could be. Economics is said to be all about choice. But what is a choice with no options? Can people who never had a choice create options? In the socio-economic country that we live in, the chance to advance, which once inspired countless individuals to achieve the American dream, is becoming further removed from our grasp. As the gap between rich and poor increases, what is there to do? When the poor man is controlled by the rich man, how is he able to succeed? For many, life is not easy and is not determined by a single choice. However, it is the combination of choices that decide which clothes we wear, what we eat, what car we drive, where we go to school, and ultimately, where we live.